Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, Rachel. Happy New Year, Christy. Because we be haven't back. seen each other at all, have we? <laughs> if I didn't think I'd see you today, Rachel just ran in about 10 seconds ago. Have you caught your breath? Now? I have, I have. I'm all right now. I can, I can I form a sentence, I think. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, welcome back, everybody, and welcome to Perspectives number 36, the term head. And do you know what? It actually is feeling quite normal, don't you think? It is. Is there any wood around, though? Uh, this one. Something there we go. Oh, no, something. <laughs> something. It is. It is. Yeah, it does actually feel very normal. And what was lovely today was to see the exam hall filled with desks. And I know, I don't think ever, you know, normally you would say that's not a lovely sight, seeing that. But I put it on LinkedIn this morning. The, the sports are all set up this morning. And pupils from like seven or eight years ago were actually commenting, saying, oh, it never changes and it's great to see it back. It got quite a lot of views because I think just seeing it back, it's sort of like back to normal, isn't it? It is. And we, we've had assembly today as well with everybody back together again. And it is lovely. It, it, it does is. give a sense. The little things like that give a sense of normality, don't they, that we've missed yeah. for, for so long. So the, um, reason, the reason why our exam hall was set up was because this morning all of our year 11 took the IGCSE maths, uh, which we do every year. Whole of year 11 take it in January. And uh, it's the first external exam in two years. It's quite unbelievable. I know the head of maths, Gwynells, was, was it texting me um, over the weekend saying, it's wonderful now that we're getting back to some normality. And Sharon, Sharon's here, he, who's our assistant head academic. How did the, how do you think the exam went this morning, Sharon? Hi, hi everybody, hi, happy, happy new year. Happy. Um, it went really well. Um, everybody was, I was so impressed. Everybody was really calm going in. Um, yeah, there were a few nerves, um, a few nerves there, but I was really, really impressed. Um, it was freezing cold and everybody was just lining up. Nobody had their phones, which was a great thing. You know, we, we always check before they go in. So they've done it now. And that's the first one. I've just I did ask everybody, just keep yourself safe this week. Keep your masks on um, because we want to make sure they can take paper two next week. Um, and I think it's just a great thing, again, to see everybody going back into the exam hall. Um, you know, I was really quite excited about them going in there this morning. I'm sure some of them weren't, but, you know, really happy that they're back again. So we've got, you know, we've got a busy term ahead of us because we've started with that maths and the exam hall is um, it's not going to be um, very free for the next uh, few weeks because on the 24th of January, of course, we start our mocks. They'll be going on until the 4th of February. So that's all good. Um, and I know um, we were talking about whether the exams would go ahead this year. Well, I think we've started on a positive note. So again, you know, just we're, we're just moving forward now. We're starting to prepare everybody for those exams in the summer. You know, we've got to think in our heads, they will go ahead, but you know, if they don't, we've got everything, we've got the contingency in place and we'll be here ready to, you know, to help any of our pupils ahead in the journey in the next few months. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. I know, I know we try and stay on the fence a little bit to say, you know, mm. we can do whatever we have to do. But there was a lot in the papers at the weekend about whether exams go ahead, because would it be fair? Because if you think now, you know, there's a lot of schools where infections are rising, there's children out of school. Would there not be a strong argument that it's not fair for the exams to go ahead because of the amount of time? And I know I'm putting you on the spot. What do you think? I really do think that we need to let our pupils go into the exam hall and we need to let them show what they're made of because they have been in school a little bit. You know, we're very lucky here. We've managed to keep their, you know, we've managed to keep their programs going and, you know, they haven't they haven't lost parts of the course that maybe, you know, some of the pupils have. But we need to let them go and show what they're made of and we need to make sure they're prepared. But I'm sure that the exam boards are going to be very fair. I think that if things change, they'll move very quickly. Um, it could be, I mean, they've got to tell us by the 7th of, of February, any changes that will go ahead to um, the syllabus and the content of the exam. We don't know exactly what they're going to tell us yet, but they'll let us know. By the 7th of February, we should have some more idea about what's going on. And of course, we'll have a few more weeks of, of data from the government. But as I say, I'm I'm really positive. I'm the one that's always got the positive hat on. They will go ahead. I want them to go ahead. Um, but again, if they don't, 
we've got everything in place and I keep saying that I know I'm like a broken record but you know um I just still think they will go ahead I'm I'm, I'm going to be there I'm, you know I'm not going to bet on it but that's what I think <laughs> I think we're all keeping a positive. Rachel, you've got yeah. time for um, exam age. I have, year 13. What do you think? I think they will go ahead. I think that 7th of February announcement is going to be key as to, because there's 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 talk of them giving the idea, isn't there, about, about content and what how much will be examined and how much might not be examined. But I think, apart from that, to write a passage for those children, it's really, really, really important. I mean, this is the, the year 13 this year, obviously the year that didn't sit their GCSEs. Um, and I think it's important. I think they actually, they might not admit it out loud if their friends were listening, but I think deep down inside them, they want to do because they want to really own the results. I know that's certainly my daughter's case. She wants to know that she's really owned mm. that and she would rather go into the exam hall and do it that I think then have another set of grades that have been given to her on the basis of, of non-examined work, I think. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. I think the exams have to go ahead. We have to get back to this kind of disciplines that we had before. But again, I'm going to throw it out there. What if there's an, you know, a national kind of outcry? It's not fair because a lot of children have missed a lot of time. Is it a level playing field? Well, <laughs> it, I, I don't know is the answer to that question. I mean, our children, as, as Sharon's already said, have, have had a really good, you know, um, really good program for them haven't they we've kept their progress going we've kept mm. their teaching going whatever and you know and I have to be honest my daughter's in the same fortunate position but I also know that there are places around the country where that's not necessarily the case but I think I think the exams have to go ahead yeah really they I do. do I think we've been really fortunate as well I'm t again touch wood we need a lot of wood around here at the moment <laughs> perhaps um, we should get a wooden bar <laughs> <laughs> just so when we say these things we could just yeah. we is, could just top it is that at the moment we don't seem as infected as some schools do we at the moment no. not you know you probably won't know in the junior school because obviously not what not do you testing. think about the testing though in junior school do you think they should be testing I think a lot of our families are doing it at home you do. I, I do think they are. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they are um, very sensible. At the end of the day, everybody wants their children to continue coming to school and succeed and, and be happy and mm. healthy, don't they? So I think since the, the guidance changed last term about, you know, younger children who are close contacts using LFTs, I think more families have got into the routine um, and, and um, are doing it at home anyway with those younger children, yeah. um, even though they don't have to. And obviously we don't do it in school. And I think that's probably the case pretty much across the country where people can get hold of lateral flow tests. Mm, yeah. um, I mean, we've certainly been contacted about families where they've said, not this term yet, but you know, last term where they said something's come up on a lateral flow test and we're, we're going to go for a PCR. So I think a lot of families are doing it. Yeah. Laura, you're here with us today. Can you tell us a little bit about the COVID situation in school right now? Yeah, I can do. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, firstly, I just want to say thank you so much um, for all the pupils that are testing. Um, it is really good. And I know that a lot of the tests are being submitted through the Evolve system. And it is really good um, to see so many of you testing because it is important that we do all play our part to try and keep everyone as safe as possible. Um, and I think, you know, based on just what Rachel was saying, um, although children in the infant and junior school don't need to um, test and it's not part of the government guidance unless they're a close contact, I think it is really important that they do get used to it. And the fact now that they're only nasal and not down the back of the throat, um, I think the younger children do actually prefer that, obviously, and it makes it easier. Um, so you can continue to submit those results through Evolve as well. And obviously do let us know if um, any of them do turn up positive. Um, in terms of the COVID situation in school, we currently have about 15 pupils across uh, the infant, junior and also into the senior school uh, that are currently isolating with COVID at the moment. Um, and um, the majority of these um, were actually infected before we came back um, or have tested positive over the weekend. What was really, really good um, for us to see was that during the on-site testing on Thursday, we had very few that actually turned up um, positive. And I think that demonstrates the, you know, how successful we are all being at testing our pupils on a regular basis. Um, so thank you very much for that. Thanks, Laura. And um, obviously, again, in the news over the weekend about a shortage of lateral flow. Have you, has anybody heard anything about, about that? We did have one family come to me last week to, to ask if we had any in school because they couldn't get them out in the community. Um, so I think they have. But I think it's patchy and I think they, they I think they are being restocked quite quickly. Mm. Um, and certainly the, at the lexicon in Bratnell upstairs, 
near, near where the Grange Hotel is, they've had family packs there, mm -hmm. which are great, they're packs of 20 um, rather than the seven. So that's that's been quite good. I think their stock's been quite good. Mm -hmm. But I think there's the odd pharmacy dotted around the place that runs out, although they get delivered quite quickly. Yeah, I must admit, a couple of um, weeks ago, I went up to see my sister in Nottingham and she, she wanted us to do a lateral flow, obviously, before we, we came in the house. And we left home without them. So when we got up to Nottingham, we were actually trying to find some. And we went to a number of places, including the hospital, couldn't get them. Lucky enough, she um, she had some. So we had to sit out on her drive and do a lateral flow <laughs> before she let us in the house. But thankfully, it was negative. Okay. But we're seeing quite a few people who are getting it for a second time, Laura, aren't we? You know, there's a few people in school, aren't there? Yeah, there are. Um, I think, obviously, it, I mean, what the really positive thing is that the majority of people that actually have contracted it um, are very, very mild symptoms or asymptomatic. So the good news is, is that very few of our school population at the moment are currently unwell um, with COVID, which is good. But yes, we are seeing the reinfections generally from those that potentially have had it um, in 2020. And obviously with the new variant um, coming out, that's where they're getting it from. But as I said, the good thing is the symptoms do seem to be very, very mild or asymptomatic cases, which is good. I suppose the next couple of weeks are going to be the the, the, the testing time now, won't they? You know, um... yeah. I think so. And I think obviously, you know, we are it, we are expecting a spike in our cases um, within school. It's, it's normal. We are trying very much to keep as normal as school life as possible um, for all of the pupils. It's, you know, for their mental well-being, also for the staff as well. So whilst we are taking some precautions with the face coverings in classrooms, etc., um, it is, you know, we are still running fixtures. We are still running our co-curricular clubs. Um, we are still mixing um, slightly as well um, throughout. But, you know, there is going to be a spike in cases. We are going to provide that online learning, which, we, which we're good at as well when uh, the students are self-isolating. Um, but it is to be expected. But as long as it remains mild and or asymptomatic, that's a positive thing. I know, obviously, in the news at the weekend, it was saying it's going to be rather pandemic endemic now. Mm. So like we're just going to have to live with. Absolutely. And I you think know. if they do go ahead and cut the isolation down to five days, mm. that will have a big impact as well, won't it? So, yeah. Um, yeah. And if you do have any questions for us as we're talking, then please send them through. There's a couple of comments coming from maths here. So um, our head of maths is here that she's glad the, the maths exam went today. I hope it was a good paper, Gwyn, and that they were all happy when, the, when they came out of the exam this morning. So, Laura, why, while you're here, can you talk a bit about co-curricular, about what we expect to see this, this term? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a full co-curricular programme um, this term. So they are all running as normal. And there may be occasions, and I know uh, Phil will speak more about the sport later, where maybe fixtures are unable to go ahead um, through to, uh, potentially through obviously COVID cases in other schools and stuff. So that's just something to keep an eye on. But ultimately, our co-curricular club is uh, um, our full. We've got about 160 clubs running across the infant, junior and the senior school for all year groups. Um, and all the sign ups been done through Evolve there, which is brilliant. Um, and I know that uh, the children are really excited to get back into those clubs. Um, the ski trip to Italy in February half term is, fingers crossed, still going ahead. I know some of you have been disappointed um, because of the vaccination statuses um, that obviously the Italian government obviously dictate um, to us. But we are still very much hoping to run it as we are hoping to run other day trips um, as well throughout, because we do realise obviously the, the valuable importance of these. Um, and just very quickly, going back to the COVID related, when I mentioned vaccinations there, um, the Berkshire immunisation team are coming back into school at the end of January um, to offer the second doses um, for years uh, for those aged 12 through to 16 as well. Um, so you can also book your uh, the vaccinations through the NHS or you can wait for them to come in um, with the Berkshire Immunisations team as well. Brilliant. Kate, from uh, Deputy Head in the Infant and Junior School, you're with us. Can you just tell us a bit about co-curricular in the Infant and Junior School? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, as Laura said, we've got a full full uh, complement of uh, co-curricular clubs going on uh, this term and everything is getting going this week. We've got a brand new one, Music Technology, uh, which a lot of the children are very excited about and loads being run by the staff as well, lunchtimes, mornings and after school. Um, so yeah, the children are all getting really excited about going back to clubs. That's great, thank you. So um, Bradley, Bradley Hunt, our head of boarding, can you tell us a bit about boarding? How have we kicked off this term? Yes, yes. Uh, happy new year everyone. Um, so boarding last week we welcomed back our boarding pupils um, and we opened up boarding to our international pupils for isolation 
um, if they require that as well. And I'm pleased to say that everyone who is in isolation um, are well and are coping really, really well with their isolation at the moment. But uh, just a huge thank you to obviously our boarding parents in particular and our guardians um, just for really the, the, the quick return back to school last week um, and for your excellent communication and support that you've given the boarding staff. Um, it's been really much welcomed. Um, so, yeah, the boarding community is going fit and strong. Uh, last term was really busy. Uh, we saw, obviously, trips going out to Winchester Christmas markets and we had our annual Borders Christmas dinner and they were really successful. Um, and it was very busy. This term, we uh, do have trips lined out to Gravity Force um, and also to London, to Oxford Street, Chinatown, the London Eye. So while we can, we're taking our boarding pupils um, out and about. Um, but spirits are high um, and the boarders are glad to be back. And I think the boarding staff as well are good, uh, really pleased to see the kids coming back and enjoying things um, as normal. Um, so very positive on that front. Uh, boarding this term, um, we had a brilliant uh, taster package for our year seven day pupils last term. And that was really successful. Um, really good positive feedback from yourselves as parents and from the pupils as well. And we are looking at this term to go out to other year groups and to offer that same opportunity um, to get our day pupils to come into boarding. Um, so there's a range of packages, uh, flexi occasional uh, boarding. So if you're interested, please do uh, contact me at the school. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely not a, a, a boring term to, uh, to have in boarding. It's kind of... Never boring. Never boring. Never and don't boring. forget. Never to boring. boring. Never. Never boring. <laughs> it's always something. Don't forget to include us on the trips as well, because we. Like... I know you I like the London, London trips, trips. kind of. I thing. certainly <laughs> do. <I> certainly <laughs> do. So one of our trustees is on a uh, governor here. Is Colin Hayford says the last line of the Times obituary for Sir Christopher Hogg last month. The golden rule is to look forward and outwards and not inwards and backwards. So true. So true. That is definitely the LBS way, definitely. isn't it? Definitely. Most definitely. And we have yeah. a new parent talking about online learning. OK, so now we've got we've got both Sharon and Kate to talk about it. Sharon, do you want to tell us a little bit what online learning looks like? What did it look like and what would it look like if we had to go online? OK, okay. so at the moment, as school is as, as school is is fully open, um, we do not have the the online learning that we had during lockdown. So if um, if your child has to isolate and um, and, you know, stay at home because they have COVID and they're well enough to access lessons, then we we can call them into lessons and all of their work will be put on the respective teams, the su respective subject teams. When I say we can call them into lessons, what we'll do is we'll try to call them into as many lessons um, uh, as we can. Sometimes that might not be the might not be possible because the lesson might not be taking place in the classroom. They might be learning outside or they might be doing a, um, an assessment or, or something like that. So it's not quite the same as when we were, you know, when the school was cl closed and everything was was online. So, um, you know. Uh, teachers know to post messages on the teams and all of the work will be either in assignments or in files on the team and there'll be you know sort of constant communication between tutors and the subject teachers if for some reason next week we had to close the school and we had to go back into lockdown obviously that's not going to happen I've got my positive hat on um you know we would overnight we would revert to what what we did in lockdown and school would become online again because the teachers would be you know teaching remotely luckily because we've got everything set up all our teams all of our devices and everything we could do it from you know from one hour to the next so you know we've always as I say we've got that contingency in place but for the moment moment in order to ensure you know continuity of education if your child is away because of covid there will still be you know some lessons online that they can they can they're almost sort of called into the classroom it's not as good as face-to-face -face learning but you know it just means that they won't miss everything okay, okay. and kate, kate is it the, kate, is it yeah. the same for the infant and junior school kate Pretty much. Um, it works slightly differently down in reception, I think, than it does 
up with me in year six, slightly uh, different challenges going on. And obviously I can't speak for when school was closed because I wasn't here at the time, Uh, but we have had children isolating, dialing in, uh, as Sharon says, onto Teams, um, being able to see what's going on, contribute to the lessons, and then all their work gets done either on Teams or on OneNote. Brilliant. That's fantastic. I even had them called into the assembly this morning. I had a um, Surface Pro on top of the piano and the children were at home just dialed into the meeting oh. and, and were able to take part in that. So, yes, it's, it's pretty much a little bit, as Kate says, a little bit different if they're very, very young. Mm. Um, key stage one reception and, and um, year one you use something called Seesaw, which is a little bit simpler than Teams for the young children to navigate, but everything is, is there for them. Yeah, and Sharon, we do have a number of children who are accessing, not just for COVID, but we had some children can come back because of the flight situation as well. Can yeah. you give us a bit more on that? Yeah, yeah. Um, last week, I haven't checked the, li- uh, the list today, we had about 22 boarders who haven't been able to to come back to school um, for the begin- right for the beginning of term, or they might be isolating for a few days while they wait for their um their PCR results to come through so again they're able you know they've been able to dial into some to some lessons all of their work has been set on on teams um there were a couple of pupils who are still having to isolate and they were taking the maths exam the, this morning but because they're on site they were still able to do that so that you know so we we find a ways around around everything um Hopefully, you know, some of, unfortunately, some of the flights were um, cancelled. Some of the pupils are still not able to get back. But, you know, we're hoping that they'll come back as soon as they possibly can. So, again, it's that that's our contingency. Um, You know, they are still able to access uh, their lessons and their work. We don't want them to lose any more time. I think sometimes the UK is a bit of a victim of its own success, really, because because we are testing and we have got those figures. It actually does put off people from other countries. Um, mm. You know, the, the UK is not the place to go at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. what we do try to say to everybody, and I'm sure um, uh, I'm sure Mr. Hunt does the same. We, we we try and reassure all of our guardians and parents that you know our, our pupils that are coming back into Borden, it's a safe place for them to be. Um, the majority of them are back, and they have been here all the way through lockdown. I mean, even when school was closed, we had uh, pupils on site that were learning and accessing their lessons here. So you know, it's just again, you know, it's uh, but you can understand that some parents that are maybe you know the other side of the world just are looking at the headlines and so you know we've we've got to just reassure them but also put something in place to make sure that our pupils don't miss any more time at school. Yeah thanks thanks Sharon thanks Kate so we're moving on to performing arts so we've got Miss Clark here and uh, so I know you've always got a lot to say Miss Clark there's always so much going on. There is always so much going on. We are very busy as we were last term. And it, as uh, last time, it was so wonderful to see students back on stage. We had year five and six in their um, performance, Born for a Life at Sea. And then we had our seven to 13 production of The Little Mermaid. And it was just so wonderful to see students actually performing on stage and audiences be it with masks on. But we had full audiences in um, supporting them, which was really lovely because everything we've done up until then had been virtual. Um, so that was really nice. And actually, we're not completely moving away from, from the virtual side of things. We have a few virtual entries um, for the ISA Shakespeare competition and the ISA Musical Theatre competition. So we are actually um, still working with some things virtually but it's great to have uh, performances live performances to look forward to as well so um, we have got the ISA musical theatre filming coming up and we've already auditioned that um, and we're looking for Shakespeare performances so for those that are um, keen drama performers we have the ISA Shakespeare monologue competition uh, that Mr Cully is going to be heading up and uh, information about auditions for that will be out very shortly Um, as well as that we have um, our um, senior house performing arts coming up so this was postponed from before Christmas and this will hopefully see um, all six houses uh, take to the stage and they have um, their own choice of what they perform so they can uh, do some musical pieces uh, some drama pieces they can dance it's performing arts so it encapsulates all of um, the of different disciplines and they can put them together if they wish and they have a, a theme to respond to um, and we'll also have um the intermediate house performing arts coming up in the summer term but it's the seniors term um, and I, I believe that junior the juniors have their junior house music this term as well 
uh, Ms. McCrell's nodding at me. So I, I, I would say safe to say that, that that one's coming up as well. So again, it's really nice that we've got the house spirit and we talked to quite a lot about house spirit um, at, when the students came back uh, last week. So it's nice to be able to have those house competitions going ahead live. And so the house uh, senior house performing arts is taking place on the 9th of February. Um, and that uh, is going to see all six houses take to the stage, fingers crossed. Um, and then we have our senior school play. So this is a, a drama opportunity for our year 10 to 13 students and they've auditioned it and they're busy rehearsing and they are performing on the 24th to the 26th of February. Now, um, it does contain some more mature themes um, because we wanted to challenge our students. So there is a, a 15 plus age rating on it for our audiences um, and ticket information is coming out very soon. Uh, but it's a, it's a great play. It's really challenging um, for the students. So it's giving them more opportunities uh, to stretch their drama skills um, and we do have some students working backstage on the technical elements of that as well um, and then we have ISA drama right at the end of term that we will be auditioning for um, year 10 have already started so we have a year 10 piece and then a year seven to nine group will be performing as well and we'll be auditioning parts for that uh, Mr Fisher will be doing that within his drama club that runs on a Monday lunchtime so um, very very busy um, and then on top of that not that that's not busy enough we've got our LVS Ascot Performing Arts Festival so previously we've had a music festival and then a dance and drama festival this year they are all combined um, unfortunately obviously for the last couple of years we've not been able to hold this so we are back on the 28th through to the 28th of February through to the 6th of March and that's music in the week and then dance on the Saturday and drama on the Sunday um, and information is coming out this week to all LVS students and then it's open to um, schools in the local area to come and join us as well so that will be really nice for our students to be able to compete against other schools as well wow That's really, yeah could you write all, that all down for us please <laughs> absolutely it's all here i'll send it all through um and obviously we're keeping still going with all our music lessons and all our lambda lessons and they're becoming busier and busier and actually i think last time i spoke just before christmas i had quite a few students or parents email and students have picked up lessons after that so if anyone is interested in lambda lessons uh, or music in lessons we have a range of instruments i would list them all but i will forget some i'll give it a go i'll tell you what violin um we have flute, clarinet, uh, brass, um, piano, singing. Uh, I'm already starting to forget what we've got. Uh, did I say brass? I think I did. Brass members in guitar, drums. I, like I've got help from, from my colleagues are all giving me, uh, it's like playing charades. Um, I think that's all of them. Uh, but yeah, so they're all, they're all running. We actually have a new drum teacher starting because the demand for drums was so high, which is great. Um, and lots of them are filling up, which is lovely to see. And so that with the demands there, we will obviously cater to that. Okay, brilliant. Well, look, don't run away because Mrs. Robinson's coming okay. on now and she's going to talk about charity and then we can talk a bit more houses. Mrs. Robinson, you're there. You're going to tell us a little bit about charity. Yeah, I wanted to do a, a little sort of recap on last term. Um, so we kicked off the year in amazing style. Uh, it was your little initiative with the Shine Walk, which brought together quite a, quite a, a, a gang of teachers and um, I'm not entirely certain what the total was, because I know if I look at your Just Giving page, it is well in excess of £2,000. But I know individual members of staff had their own Just Giving pages, plus others did, uh, like Miss Ruger did, the cake sale. And we also had members of staff who just donated direct to uh, Cancer Research. So it was a fabulous uh, start to our year. And we followed up that quite quickly with our food bank appeal. And that was delivered by our junior school uh, senior prefects, or I'm sorry, whatever they're called down there. And uh, they had a little prefect team that went with one of our minibuses to a local homeless charity. And they were absolutely overwhelmed and delighted with what our students as a whole school had gathered together. And it was much, much appreciated. So much so that I know Miss Mellywish um, in year 12 one of our tutors there, instead of her tutor group having a secret Santa at Christmas, they wanted to do the same sort of thing again. And they did a huge collection within their tutor group and again uh, dropped off just before Christmas. So it's lovely the way in which our students come together and can see a little bit beyond themselves. 
something that we developed um, because when we came back uh, the previous year through COVID and trying to avoid bringing in money that has to be handled, but also to avoid crowds, uh, was the cashless system. And that has been really successful. I know as a parent that uh, when my to a disappearing off to school and it's a, a mufti day. It's always that last minute when they remind you that you're trying to scramble around for cash. And the way things have gone, we don't seem to have as much change in our pockets as we used to for that sort of thing. It's, it's a nightmare when you go and uh, need uh, car parking money and things like that. So going to our cashless system has been really, really smooth and it's allowed, I think, parents to be easier. So I, I email home if it's a mufti day, uh, I alert the parents and if if you guys are happy for your child to turn up in Muff Day and they do, then it goes on to the school bill. So that has been hugely successful. It's been really easy for the tutors as well and certainly kept my hands clean. So I'm not having to count up lots and lots of coins. Uh, so if we can change the slide now. So uh, as a whole school for our Remembrance Day, we raised £577, which is a huge sum, especially when you think that uh, our students and families are you know, picking up poppies and other uh, items outside of school as well. So, But within school, as a whole school, we raised £577, which is phenomenal. And if I can go to another slide... Uh, children in need this year was a huge success. Now, this figure here is for the senior school. I think as a whole school, we were around about the 1200 mark. And what we added on this year, we've usually done a, a the BBC do a little sweepstake. It's usually been a duck race in previous years. This year, it was a, a biscuit stack uh, with a couple of the Radio 1 DJs. I actually tuned in and watched it. It was, it was a bit like Jenga, but with biscuits. And as a sweepstake, we had to identify which DJ and which biscuit would be the last one on before it toppled. And I opened this up to families for across the whole school to get involved and they could buy a couple of uh, sweepstake tickets. So this year we raised quite a hefty sum, uh, £807. So that's combined with our Mufti Day in the senior school. And as I say, there was a Mufti down in the uh, juniors as well, which raised this to even higher uh, amounts. So we can change the slide again. And this is right up to Christmas now. So just as we broke up, we had our annual uh, Christmas jumper day. And this year we actually raised 25% more than we have done in any of our previous years, which was amazing. And what I particularly love about our students is, because when, when I go through the list, again, for that billing aspect, is how balanced that was across all year groups, including our older students who are, you know, it all gets a little bit too cool. but at LVS, that festive spirit and that joining in and not taking ourselves too seriously really comes across. So I was really, really pleased and delighted that we'd smashed previous targets on this. And this was including having quite a few students out at that point because of flying home early, because it was the very, very final day. And uh, if I can go to the, my final slide. So looking ahead, uh, we've got a couple of whole country things that will be happening so comic relief is now going to annual it used to be a biannual event it's now annual and that's happening in march so we'll be planning some stuff for that and national day of reflection was something that started last year again in march um, and this is related to remembering those who've lost their lives and been affected by covid and so we worked on that last year as a reflection and raise some money. So I'll be looking at ways in which we can raise some money again this year. We've got house charities coming to still to come together and to arrange events there. And I'm hoping also to get another one of our highly successful cake box um, sales in. We didn't do one at the beginning of the year because we were doing the, the um, shine walk, but I still want to do that. So where you can order it, um, uh, a cake box for your your child within school in the seniors and uh, that's been a really big fundraiser in in our previous couple of times we've done it so that's where we're at with the charities at the moment great thanks and kate i think you've got something to add for the infant and junior school 
Uh, uh, yes, yeah. we've got uh, lots going on down in the Infant and Junior School as well. Um, we've got Comic Relief coming up on the 18th of the 3rd, as Mrs Robinson said. Um, and we're hoping to start to raise some money for Time to Talk Day. Uh, we're delighted that three members of our staff joined some of the senior school staff uh, to do their mental health first aid uh, training the other week. So it's Time to Talk Day, all about mental health and talking about how we're feeling. And I think that fits in really nicely with our life learning down in the Infant and Junior School. And it couldn't be more important at a time like this, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. And and just another thing, just to feed into the charity work as well, There's we've had conversations about eco projects with the WOW group and with the uh, sick form prefects as well about what we can do, how we can contribute. And one of the, uh, uh, the ideas that, that they've had is that we have almost like a fashion exchange. So it could be quite good. So they, the children bring in their, their, their clothes, their unwanted clothes to swap. <laughs> and rather than passing cash that we have almost like our LVS Bitcoin, so maybe we'll have to get some casino chips or something. And we bring in a literally trader uh, and, and the clothes, because I think the children are very responsible like that. And there's so many things that they can mm. swap, isn't it? I mean, you've yeah. got three girls. I have got three What's girls, What's your house yes. like? Uh, we have a, a, a good clear out several times a year, and the, the size of the sort of bin bags and things that go by the front door, and they do always take them to a charity shop and mm. stuff. But I, I look at them and I think, you, you know, I'll say to the girls, you've worn that twice. Yeah. You know, well, I know, but it's not quite what I want anymore. And it's it's so sad. So it would be good yeah. to, to move things around. And I also, think. you know, with disposable fashion and all the issues regarding that, it's about time we start recycling, isn't it? It is, definitely. Yeah. And, it, and you know, I don't think, you know, children are, are that bothered. You know, when we were younger, you know, I didn't, I had older brothers and sisters, um, you know, with the hand-me-downs. It was the done thing, wasn't <laughs> it? And, and now, I mean, if I, I mean, my youngest daughter's 12. And if I even suggest to her that she has a hand-me-down, from one of her older sisters it's the worst possible thing in the world I could have said that's you know but I I think there can be if they have a chance to go out and choose it themselves yeah. then I think it's different because the girls do all love going to these um vintage kilo yeah um, things where you go and buy a kilo of clothes, don't you? Yeah. So even that sort of concept might be something that we could yeah, absolutely. we could work with. Well, I know. Often I'll see my daughter going out. I think, I, I know that those shoes, <laughs> they're, they're familiar. They're mine. Yes. Oh, my handbags. You see, yeah. I'm lucky in that regard because my feet are significantly bigger than my children's. <laughs> but the older two, my yeah. older two children forever are arguing about whose shoes belong to who. Yeah. So I think they've given up trying to own them anymore. I also think then we could, if that's successful, we can actually do it for the adults as well. Because how many things do we have in our wardrobe that we could... Plenty. Absolutely. Plenty. We did promise ourselves that shop a year we ago. We did. <laughs> yeah. We did. <laughs> okay, so that's so Eco. So if you want to be part of that as well, we do actually have a WOW group meeting on Thursday night, which is by Zoom. And there's a PTA meeting tomorrow night on site. There's about 15 of us. So exciting. If you, yeah, it is exciting. It is. We've worked on that for oh, two years. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to keep ourselves safe, of course. And uh, but if you want to join either of those, then then let us know. and We'll make sure that you're you're given the details for joining. Or tomorrow is on site in the conference room upstairs at seven o'clock in, in the evening as well. Okay, so moving on to um, house spirit because we've got we've got two um, of the senior school IHMs, and obviously we've got the, the infant and junior school staff here as well. We want to get back this house spirit. We want to get mm. back the competitiveness that we had before COVID. So over to Miss Clark mm. and Mrs Robinson and. Um, Tell us, how are we going to get this house spirit? How are we going to get it rocking and rolling? I think you've probably got two of the most competitive uh, HMs actually uh, here with you and so, some colleagues are nodding. Um, it was, uh, we, we've spoken a lot about sports day that we had at the beginning of the year and how wonderful that was to see um, the houses come together. And, and we've all spoken about how we had our, our new year sevens uh, in who were brilliantly getting involved with everything, but also being supported by our older years and that our house captains were able to take on a lot of the responsibility and organize um, many of the, many of those running events um, but also just to sort of bring everybody together um, and then we saw it with house hockey and house rugby just before um, Christmas how that they were all coming together and actually we combined some of our houses um, in in line with how the junior school combined theirs because of um, numbers and that was really nice whilst we were um, still competing as our houses to see everyone working really nicely together was great so I think um, we, we need the competitions back is one of the the main things because um, that competitiveness yeah. 
um, I think is key what, to, to the house spirit. Whereas, uh, you know, we all get on so so wonderfully well. Um, we do like a good competition uh, and I'm sure Mrs. Robinson will agree with me. Oh, very much so. Um, yes, me and Miss Clark are quite famous because we used to be the same team a few years ago. So when we ended up heading up our own houses separately, it's, uh, yeah, that comp- competitive edge. Is, we, we really do try and challenge each other. Uh, I think also, as I mentioned a moment ago with the charities, we've got house charities to, to go ahead, which unfortunately last year we we couldn't do in that same way that we have in the past. We ended up doing a the whole six houses together. Uh, we did an event for one charity that we, we uh, aim to cover. Uh, I think this year we might have to, perhaps double up to make sure we can cover it which is something we're doing with house dinners which I'm hoping very much hoping goes ahead because I love I love the house dinners and the spirit that that gives our students I think it's just that opportunity for them to come together with all the year groups together as a team and just to sort of take on that challenge and it'd be yeah, and we actually that. saw that with um the drop down day that we had in the senior school and the house presented their um thoughts that the, their learnings on that and we came together at the end of the day as a house and that's something that's been missing so definitely with the charity days and the dinners coming together um will really help encourage that house spirit as, as long as along with the competitions that we'll hopefully get in person this year yeah exactly. I'm gonna echo that, that drop down day that we had uh my house when I got them all together I just I couldn't believe how wonderful they all were with presenting and how maturely they did it and how good every year group was at listening and you know this is our house this is my my group of people I'm going to listen to them and it was such a great effort. Mm -hmm. Over in the Everton Junior School we um, we've got our house music coming up um, with our performance poetry competition that takes place in March. We've added a house element to that, so while each class will do their poem, then children from each house are going to do solos and duets. Um, and we've got our house assemblies coming back as well, which we hadn't done before because of mixing the age groups, so we've got our house assemblies coming back. So I think all of those things yeah. um, will will help. I mean, ours are always very excited about their house points, I think. <laughs> that, that potentially wanes a little bit when they get older doesn't it but the little ones love the the whole house point thing and announcing the totals every week on a friday sort of g's them up a little bit we give them a running total every week so they all know how how close or not it might be saying Um, that when they see the cup on president's day and it's hid under the table with the colored ribbon on it it brings the house down yes so this is the house spirit and the house dinners are going ahead they're going to be doubled up aren't they so, Mrs. Robinson, tell us a little bit about when, when are they? Do you know? They're all this term, aren't they? Yeah, I believe so. I think mine's February. I think they're all sort of a couple of weeks apart. Um, and okay, again, Mrs. Robinson, um, Buchanan and Coburg are on the 1st of February, and then it's Melbourne Break on the 7th of February, and Kennington Heart on the 24th of February. So, all coming up quite closely together, which is nice. And what might be really nice is if we invite the year six. That would be really nice because they're doubled up. So that because they're really doubled lovely. up, that yeah. would that would be a really nice yeah. thing to do actually. Okay, really help with that transition potentially. Yeah, we had a we had a couple of questions here. So from Leila Denning about the summer festival. That was I think that's what you're talking about the big party in the park that we used to do. We haven't put in the diarrhea party in the park, but what we've done is we decided last week we're going to put the marquee up in the end of the last two weeks. It's going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you thought last September was busy, you wait till you see this one. Yeah, and um, we are literally packing that with events which goes on to um, Mrs Corns yes there will be a year 11 prom and I know Mrs Robinson we haven't talked about this yet because it literally decided last week we've got the marquee up we might as well use it again so it'll be in with those last two weeks of term along with the year 13 levers as well so yes you do have to start prom dress I tell you what, I do not envy you one bit so no. you've been there, well, you've got been one there. more to do I've got you? one more to go uh, we've got, of course, my, my middle daughter's prom dress never got worn. Oh, crikey. Because she, yeah. she never had her prom. So it was a very beautiful dress. So I've told her whether she likes it or not, she will, in fact, be wearing it for her sixth form leavers ball. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there you I, go. I mean, I've only done it once. And we must have gone in every shop in Oxford Street, every shop in Reading, every shop in every uh, retail part you can think of. Yeah. And we ended up getting it made. So... Mrs Corns, if you need us, 
We're here for a cup of tea. We are. We, we've been there. Yeah, we have. Yeah. yeah. And as far as the parent staff choir is concerned, yes. So um, we have actually, we are booking the church for the Easter service on that last Monday of term. We're going ahead. Because I think what, one thing that really hit me was we cancelled our um, Christmas service because we broke up quite early. And then when we were broken up, I saw so many schools on mm. LinkedIn actually went ahead with it, didn't they? So many. I felt cheated. It, it was it was sad, wasn't yeah, it? It was it, really it was one was. of those decisions we had to make earlier rather than later, wasn't it? To sort of do the right thing, and yeah. and then you you sort of looked after in that last week, and yeah. thought, mm, maybe we maybe we, we could have done, done it. it. It's the same with the Chris Dingle. Mm. You know, it was such a shame. I mean, we we did a service in school, but it's it's not got the same atmosphere no. or or um, reflect reflective. Yeah. Um, sense I don't think when no. you're not in the church and I, th and I think we we just we have to fight back now and and go for it so yes the choir will be I need to look at some dates maybe one or two rehearsals one song let's hope we can still sing after all this time and I'm really looking forward to doing it so uh, I shall start looking out the music and, and get on to those choir members that want to take part as well and then the other thing we've got to think of is this year is the Queen's Platinum Ju um, yes. Jubilee yes and I don't know if you saw on the news this morning, and Mrs. Robinson, you might be interested in this, being in the design technology food science department, is they're looking on the BBC for a platinum pudding. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't. Did you hear about it, Mrs. Robinson? No, I've not heard about this one, but I think Miss Gill needs to get on this straight away. Yeah. It's like the coronation chicken was when she was, that came was out it? when she was cracked. That oh, was I where, had that, no idea. That's where coronation chicken came from. Yeah. It was a meal that was that prepared for for the Queen's coronation, a dish. So yeah, yeah platinum pudding sounds like a yeah. jolly good plan. Yeah, well, it's not too hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and, <laughs> sorry, humour, comic relief. I think we should do some stand-up comic body <laughs> stuff. Not me though. Um, so you know, I think although that's a national competition, that we obviously won't. You know, they're going to be real experts, aren't they? I think we could do something in school. We could do our own. We could do our own one. Our own I think so. Food. Yes, yeah. I think we could. Yeah, and I think we could do that. We could take Start that all. Out. Yes, and I think we could take that all the way through the school. Actually, yeah, absolutely. We could have some nice performances. I well. don't mind being a judge okay. on the platinum pudding. <laughs> I'm, 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 you know, I feel like that. I know I could be, I could be quite a good pudding judge. Oh, well, I, yeah, I won't be because my skills go as far as Costco when it comes to getting puddings. I could do just today. I mean, the tasting I'd... of them. Do you know what I mean? Not the cooking of yeah. them. Just the, just the, okay. the final product business. And then. We, we mustn't forget sport, talking about food. We need to walk that off. So, Mr. Cow, are you there? I am. Patient. Yeah, you're very patient. Well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Can you um, yeah, so looking, looking at the calendar, um, it's looking like another really busy and exciting term of sport. Um, we kicked off on Saturday, just gone already, with some football and netball training. Um, so despite the weather, it was really good to have everybody back that first Saturday. Um, straight back into training in the morning. Um, our regular block fixtures for those two sports uh, kicking off this week. So Saturday fixtures going to be running as normal. Hopefully we can get as many pupils out as possible, really start boosting those numbers. And it'd be great to see um, some new pupils that don't usually get involved starting to come in, really representing the school. And we've talked a lot about the the spirit and things like that. So really getting everybody in those teams joining in would be great to see on Saturdays. Um, alongside that, we've got our usual cup and league fixtures uh, and friendlies, as well as lots more tournaments to look forward to. So we've got our Ascot Schools tournaments for netball and our Berkshire Cup for netball. Um, football, we're going to ISA Nationals for the boys. Um, um, this time as well, boys hockey is really kicking off. So we've got lots of fixtures in there uh, midweek and also tournaments entered. So we'll be, be off to Lee Valley um, for the ISA National Boys Tournaments, as well as lots of Berkshire tournaments for under 12s, 13s, 14s and 15s, I think. Um, as well as the girls netball, we're looking at lots more rugby than we've had in the past. So we've had lots of interest from the girls with the rugby and it's been quite popular um, with some of the LVS1 clubs. Um, so Mr McDonald Roberts has got a few fixtures in there and the potential for some tournaments. So we've been in contact with some of the other local schools and looking to get some uh, friendly tournaments going just to try and get that popularity of girls rugby going. Um, I know there's potentials for links with Bracknell Rugby Club. I was there on Saturday and um, one of the 
committee members there actually spoke to myself and Mr Gale about wanting to get more of our girls down joining the cults there so big opportunity for a link there um one of our big events this term is always the Berkshire Schools Cross Country which is coming up on the 22nd of January uh, so Saturday it's in the afternoon um I've had a number of people sign up for that already so numbers are looking strong I think we've got people boys and girls for under 13s 15s and under 17s all keen to go across there um if anyone else does want to enter I'm sending that off back end of this week so just let me know and I can add you in um the top 16 from each age group also go through to represent Berkshire at the southeast round so really good opportunity there I think that round comes in February um so I'm awaiting to hear for details on there um and then over in the infant and junior school it's nice to be able to formally welcome Mr Gale he's our new head of junior school sport um he was with us for a couple of weeks working behind the scenes sorting out fixtures and getting settled in before Christmas um, settled in really well to the department and I know he's looking forward to his first uh, set of fixtures this Wednesday and Friday um, for the fives and sixes and the threes and fours. Um, he's also introduced some different sports already so looking to develop um, brought in some really inclusive sports so a sport called pickleball which I know all the junior school staff, um, they had a little introduction session on, which looked really fun over in the junior school hall. It's sort of a short form of tennis um, and bench ball as well. He's also added to the curriculum for their actual lessons. So again, um, really great sport. It can be mixed gender, lots of different skills and links to other sports in that. So lots of exciting things to look forward to with Mr Gale now in charge in the junior school. And then finally, just to finish, um, looking at getting a few more trips in now uh, this term. So I know, Christine, you said about getting lots of uh, trying to be back to normal as much as possible. So um, junior school and senior school, uh, Mr. Gale and myself, are hopefully looking to put in some more trips this term. Uh, one of them potentially would be the Premier League experience. Um, we've done this in the past where we went over to Wembley Stadium to see a Champions League football match in an evening. Um, and we've had communication with the company that organised that. So hopefully we can uh, get in another Premier League experience where we go over on a Saturday or a Sunday to see a Premier League football match. Um, and likewise, in the junior school, Mr Gales mentioned some um, activities, days off-site, um, he mentioned Nerf Wars, Nerf guns, it seems to be a passion of his. Um, and, then, and then the sort of outward bound outdoor activities in the afternoon session. So there's something to look out for. Um, hopefully we can get some information out in the next couple of weeks once things are finalised. You know, it sounds like an awful lot of fun down there, doesn't it? What was what with pickleball? Pickleball. So, so pickleball <laughs> is actually uh, Mrs. Kenner, um, who's our, our junior school scent teacher, plays pickleball outside of school at quite a high level, and she she brought her pickleball set in for us at the end of last term as part of our Christmas social, and seems to me to be a bit of a cross between short tennis and table tennis. Um, is, is the best way to describe it and we've had such fun with it um, and so you know and, and Mr Gale's obviously sort of been involved with that and and sees the lots of skills that can be developed with that and the, the equipment's quite light and quite a good size for junior school children to mm -hmm. develop some of those eye, hand eye coordination and, and um, hitting skills and things so yes it, it's it's good. I think he's got a huge level of experience and, and great enthusiasm and really making an impact I'm sure I'm sure you'd agree Mr Carroll. Yeah, 100 percent. And and Nerf guns. Now I remember running away from my children when they had Nerf guns because they can hurt. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that for us? He, it's something that a lot of the summer camps and the holiday camps run. Is well, we call it Nerf Wars at one of the camps I've been on before. Um, they have the smaller Nerf guns, so they're not as powerful. And you quick run down. You you can use various equipment. We used to set it up in the hall and we'd have like big camouflage sheets and they can set up their own little dens. Um, they have safety goggles, of course, keeping it nice and safe. Effectively, you can create all sorts of different rules. So you can have lives if you get hit by one of the bullets and you lose a life. And then it's basically the team with the last 
man standing is the winner, but you can create all sorts of different rules. Um, Children are, you know, at all ages, but also when they're very young, for them to really understand how physical activity is mm -hmm. fun, isn't it? And, yeah. and, and so anything like that. Well, it certainly sounds like great. fun. And talking about fun, do you know I've never been to a professional football match? Never. And talking of which, what about Lewis Hall playing for Chelsea on Saturday? What about it? Oh, Go on, that was Cow. absolutely unbelievable to see him coming out of the tunnel. Um, I have to say as well, I'm a big Tottenham fan and I actually found myself um, supporting Chelsea. I was supporting Lewis, we'll say I was supporting Lewis, but um, he actually got man of the match in that game as well. And he, to see him assist a player like Lukaku, who's a big 80 million player and to see him, it just shows where you can get to if you really set your mind to it. Um, Dream big. And he's such a lovely lad and it's fantastic for him and for his family. So brilliant, brilliant achievement for Lewis. Yeah. And only just a couple of months since we had his brother Connor on as well. You know, how yeah, mum exactly. and dad must be just beaming with pride. And yeah, I think yeah. we are. We're hugely yeah. proud of him. So, you know, well done, Lewis, as well. And then next Monday, actually, our perspective next Monday is about sport and inclusivity and, you know, involving everyone. Because we're actually launching a really new, uh, exciting sport called Tech Ball. Now we probably won't, should we let's not give anything away. We won't no, say no, anything. Keep, keep, keep it. Keep, keep, keep it. it. We're going to keep, keep it under wraps. You wait. We will be national leaders, Mr. Cow. National leaders in yeah, this yeah. sport from next yeah. Monday. Yeah. Tech ball and pickleball. And pi yeah, and pickleball. That, 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 <laughs> yes, and pickleball. <laughs> we're going to be we're going to be national leaders in, in school pickleball as we, well. Yeah, great. I'm going to come down and play some games with him. If we haven't got any more questions, we'll be signing off in about 30 seconds. Does anybody else have anything to say? Anybody that's with us? Any of our, our staff? Hopefully I haven't forgotten anybody. I don't think so. I don't think you have, no. So give it another 10 seconds for any questions. Everyone's there. No, we haven't forgotten anybody. I did that once. It was Mr Hunt. I remember I felt <laughs> really bad afterwards. <laughs> Right, I think we're coming to the end of it, but um, let, we'll see you next Monday for, for LVS Perspectives number 37 about inclusivity in sport. So um, thank you for everybody coming online today, and it's nice to see our parents, and we look forward to seeing you this time, and we have loads of things out for you, loads of things loads for you to do. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.